Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back today with another Cricut project. So if you watched the video directly before this one, you saw me unbox my brand new Cricut Bright 360, which is the amazing 360 degree lamp from Cricut that is going to make crafting at night so much easier. I cannot wait to try this. I, I mean, I'm a crafter by heart, but I'm also a night owl and it really is frustrating as a um, YouTuber, as a blogger, as a crafter who has things to do during the day to really only limit myself to those daylight hours. So this baby is bright. It can illuminate four square feet. So that is my entire work surface. And I have a big work surface. It also can go up to 3000 lux. And I don't know what that means in technical terms, but y'all, it's bright. So as you can see right now, I have my overhead light on and my lamp. So this is how I would normally craft at night. It is currently 930, which means it is pitch black outside. The Cricut Bright 360 makes it possible to do even really tedious tasks like weeding white iron on at midnight. So we are going to put that to the test and we are going to make a t-shirt. I grabbed a cut file from the Cricut Access Library and my beautiful Maker 3. And also the Maker 3 is this kind of fun, slightly blue off-white color and the Bright 360 matches. I don't know why, but that really made me very happy. Not that I don't love all of my rose pieces because they are my favorites. If anybody wants to come out with this in rose, I don't know though, I really like how these match. So we are going to get started. I'm going to turn off my overhead lights and I'm going to show you just how bright this baby is. We are going to go ahead and cut everything out and then I will move you in closer to show you the weeding. I am blind, y'all, like straight up, probably shouldn't drive at night. My eye doctor has told me I need eye surgery blind. Um, so <laughs> don't worry, I don't drive at night. I've just given it up, cold turkey. I stay here and craft. <sighs> so you're gonna see how much easier this is gonna make my life. So first of all, let's just show you, even with the other two lights, this is like literally my entire desk. And you can use the counterweight here to push this baby up, down. It does spin fully around, so you can put it wherever you need it. The head here pivots as well. And it's not ever going to get hot. So you can actually use the head of the lamp to adjust it. And it's always going to stay parallel to your project, which is amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and just get started because I really wanna see how this works. Okay, so the Bright 360 is the only light on in my house at the moment. I've turned everything else off, turned the sun off, just for y'all. I'm really excited. <laughs> So let's go ahead and pull everything up. I'm gonna go ahead and push this up a little bit. We are going to make, like I said, this Creativity Over Fear t-shirt. I thought that would be a fun one for today. Um, and I'm going to be using Smart Iron-On so that we do not have to use a cutting mat because I feel fancy tonight. Plus it's just so much easier. So we're gonna go ahead and load this into our maker. I'll tell you, I know it's silly. The other reason I like smart iron-on versus regular iron-on is that I don't have to spend any time trying to figure out which side is the shiny side and which side is the normal side. Just load it straight into the machine. So, would help if I lined this up perfectly first, but you know. 
can't do everything right the first time. There are, if you've not used the Maker 3 or the roll holder here, there are these two lines right here. And on the underside are grooves that slide right over the machine. And that is what's going to line everything up perfectly. So you line that up. Now we're gonna push this through the guides. Perfect. Let's go ahead and click customize here. And we're just gonna make sure that the design is adult size, I guess, and not child size. This lamp is so bright. I really kind of can't get over that. This, I'm like, I'm just looking at the camera and it's so much brighter than with the other lights. So we are going to cut this all out of white material. So make that all one color. You're going to go ahead and weld it all together. And then that is currently about 11. So that seems right. Let's see. It's about 10. So we're gonna make it just a smidge bigger at 11 because I want a nice big logo. Well, not really logo, like same. I'm gonna say make it. Perfect. You're going to tell it, oh, you know what? I was actually showing a friend how to use her Explore Air 2. We have to switch back to the Maker 3. I like how it makes it really easy to switch though. I'm gonna click without mat, continue, perfect. It's iron on, so we are going to mirror, hit continue. Now it is connecting via Bluetooth. I mean, you guys, this whole, this entire room is lit up. All right, it's saying that I need a little update to my machine. So we are gonna let that happen real quick. I am really excited about this. I also wanted to point out, and if you watch the unboxing where I pulled this guy out of the box, you will see, da -da -da -da, I have the box right here. Let's see if there's a picture. This is the one I have, it is the floor model. There is also a tabletop model. So if you don't have room for a floor lamp, you can get one of these that fits on your desk and they have a nice sturdy base. So regardless of how you are pushing it around, it is always going to stay sturdy. It is always going to stay counterbalanced. You can work with it for hours and hours. And you guys, when they were explaining this to me, there are so many, I don't even want to say bulbs because that's not the right technical term. There are so many bulbs in this lamp and each one lasts for over 40,000 hours. That means that this, this lamp is going to last me until the very last project I ever do. You don't ever have to replace a bulb in it. It is designed to work until you can't work anymore, which is nice. It is nice to have something that's not going to break. So, what I have to say about that. My update is almost done. I should have updated this first, but I haven't used my Maker 3 in a minute. I have been working with my Joy and with my, uh, my regular Maker. So the 3 needs to update real quick. Give me a second. Okay, so the update is done. We are ready to rock and roll. And it does tell you, of course, once you select Smart Iron On, that you do need mirror turned on. The material needs to be shiny side down because that carrier sheet, you don't need to cut the carrier sheet, you need to cut the iron on. So if you don't remember those or if this is one of your first projects, Cricut will always tell you exactly what you need to do once you select your material. So smart iron on, mirrors turned on, shiny side down. It's telling me to load my fine point blade into clamp A, which is right here and that fine, point blade is already loaded. So we're going to hit go. We're going to watch it cut. And 
that's always the best part. So first, it's going to go ahead and measure out how much of this roll we need. Perfect. And then we're going to hit go. And we will watch it work. tells us on the screen exactly how much it has cut. Although the Maker 3 is so freaking fast. The first time I saw it cut, I literally was like flabbergasted. I was blown away with how fast it is. So that is another reason I should use it more. I tend to reach for the things on the top of my bookshelf because they're at the top, but I could easily put the Maker 3 at the top. So now it is done and it is telling you right here to eject the iron on. But first you want to make sure, hold it down here, slice all the way across. Perfect. And now we can eject it. And it's perfect. I know you can't see it. It's white. So this is normally when I would grab my bright pad because weeding white vinyl or iron on is really difficult for me. But we are instead, I'm just going to reconfigure my workspace real quick. I'm going to bring you all right up next to the Bright 360 so you are seeing exactly what I see while I weed this bad boy. And we're gonna see how bright this light really is. I mean, it's pretty bright. Even just holding it under here, I can see the lines. So, feeling good. So, give me two seconds. I'm gonna reconfigure everything. I'm gonna get you set up and we're going to weed this and put it on a t-shirt. All right, y'all, so. Here is our piece. You see all those cut lines? Maybe I can see them. Here is our light. So you can see I've had it on for about 30 minutes, still not hot. I can adjust it to the right, to the left, all around. With the camera, if I put it up here, it really does illuminate kind of everything, but then the camera gets in the way. So I think for this piece, we're going to put it lower than the camera and we're going to angle it over the whole piece. And that way you can see everything. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're just going to weed this baby. Maybe. So, I don't know about y'all, but I can really see the difference in the cut lines. The thing I'm not seeing a difference in is the tip of my weeding tool. So let me grab another one. 
I think we just need a slightly sharper one. So remember that every other light in the house is off. So, you know, you're only using the bright 360 to weed this entire design because somewhere in my brain, I decided that was a good idea. But it's working, I mean, look. Normally I would be like, you'd see my hair, my head would be so far into this picture and I am sitting back and doing this. And I wonder how closer blows it out just a little bit. So this is actually a good, good distance. All right. So I think we've got all the middle pieces. Go ahead and just start on the edge here. And what I like to do is once I kind of get an edge of it started. Be careful not to go all the way through, but I just kind of score one line there. That way, I don't have to uh, do the entire piece at once. Especially something like this that has all these little lines but I don't think it's gonna be a problem because I can really see them. Usually the problem comes in because I can't see where they are. I don't know what I'm doing. And I end up taking half of them off. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? Just me? Great. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Ooh, it's working. Okay, I can see one of those didn't want to come up. Some people just literally like rip this off. But I have never had good luck doing that. There we go. We'll just grab the edge. Um, that was the easiest weeding for white I have ever done and I may or may not be obsessed so now we are going to go ahead and dun -dun -dun -dun, light this baby up warm this baby up and put it on so I'm gonna go ahead and dun -dun -dun -dun, the temperature here to 315.
and our time to 30 seconds. We're going to let that sit and warm up. And while we do, we're going to go ahead and put this on. So I always like to do it at least three or four fingers down from the neck. So that actually looks good. And let's see if we can't get the two edges. That T is the middle. So we're going to center that T right there. Smooth it on. So bright. Can't even handle it. All right, well, let's go ahead and light it up from over here. Perfect. All right, so it's all set up. We're gonna go ahead and move it to the edge here. Set it down. And since this is cotton, um, we just need a light touch, which means I don't need to push down, I don't need to press, I just kind of set it there. And then if anything doesn't quite spawn, we'll, we'll hit it again. But since we need to do two passes, busting out the big easy press would have been better for this. But uh, I'm using it for a different project at the moment, so it's at mom's house. And as you can see, this one works. You just have to move it a smidge. Over to its heat set. Now I'm going to go ahead just push everything down, make sure it's really bonded. I'm just using a little a relevant metal cap for this helps push everything down without getting your fingers hot. Right. It's not quite there. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. Sometimes it needs a little heat from the back. Just firmly bond it. So. I don't want to reheat it all, so I'm just going to kind of iron it. It's actually bonded pretty well now. I'm just gonna let it cool down. All right, it's cool to the touch. Now we can just peel it up. I still always go slow just in case, but looks perfect. Everything was easy to weed. Dun to the dun, dun. Oh, that's pretty. 
it's even sparkly. And obviously you could keep your overhead lights on, but I really just wanted to show complete psychoticness. Sun's off, lights are off, only with the Cricut Bright 360. And it was fast and easy, y'all. So I hope you guys liked this project. If you have any questions about the Cricut Bright 360, leave a comment down below. If you wanna see me do any more projects with it, any more midnight projects, let me know. Either way, I hope you liked this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, send it to your friends, show your mama. I will see you in the next video. Bye.